Welcome to the Voice of Bold Business Radio. I am your host, Jessica Duell of Red Direction. You're listening to Program 31, Notable Impact. It's on the rare occasion we actually truly look inward and look at what we have been thinking, how we have been acting, and what it actually means to the existence and the place we are in the world at this moment, at this time. External situations, life-altering experiences, all can cause self-reflection. It's what we do with that reflection that matters. We've acted or been acted upon. Well, now what? We have a choice because we always have a choice. What we do with that choice creates an impact. It can be lose-lose, lose-win, win-win, even winfinity. And here's a quote I'd like to share. You may believe that you are responsible for what you do, but not what you think. The truth is that you are responsible for what you think because it's only at this level that you can exercise choice. What you do comes from what you think. Marianne Williamson. Even at face value, if we just listen to the words and process that, the quote suggests, start thinking already. The way we think informs the action that we take toward ourselves and others. The way we think shapes how we face adversity, how we face joy even. The way we think comes out in the way we talk to ourselves and to others. We've all had stories in our lives where we've won. We've won out over adversity and where we've been withdrawn and turned away from it. It's in these moments we can find the root cause of our reaction and did we like it or not? What do we want to do about it? How do, we want to, how do we want to change so we have a different reaction next time? To take a situation to evaluate the experience and the results of that experience is what we can use to make sense of our personal development and how we show up in our businesses and in life as leaders is what act to plan in action is all about. Besides the act to plan stuff that you know that I do with Reg now, I have an incredibly amazing person that I met in California earlier this year with us today to talk about this. And she's going to answer a question when we get back. Diana Elizabeth Jordan is, has come on the show and she knows what I'm going to ask her. And I do know what she's going to say. We'll be back after this. Welcome to the Voice of Bold Business, the show that provides everything smart leaders need to evaluate situations, build relationships, and create solutions. Jessica Duo candidly talks about the skills necessary to build tenacity and do more with less. And now, here's Jessica. Diana Elizabeth Jordan is with us in the house. <laughs> hey, everybody. How are you? Um, you I'm know, pushing you love, peace. Mm, that is so fabulous. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. So I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself so that everybody who is listening to us can get a sense of who you are from you, because I can do an okay job, but I really want people to get a sense of who you are, where you're at, and what you're doing in the world today. Well, hi, everyone. I am Diana Elizabeth Jordan. I am an actor. I am a storyteller speaker. I am an expressive arts facilitator and a creative entrepreneur. I like, I always like to joke, I've been fighting adversity literally since the day I was born. I have mild cerebral palsy, which affects my speech and gait, but I grew up knowing from day Ever since I was a little girl, I knew that I wanted to act. And I just knew that I wanted that that adversity stop me from pursuing my dreams. So I've gone on to have a wonderful acting career. I've worked in film and television and theater. I'm very active with SAG and ACRA and helping to create opportunities for other so that disability is a visible and inclusive part of the American scene, that diverse images of disability are an inclusive and visible part of the American scene. And our friendship materials are really important that those materials are by actors with disabilities because we have such a talented 
community of artists. But I, I like to say that my passion as an artist extends beyond just wanting to perform. I love teaching my art. I love using my art as a process for empowerment, as a process for having a positive impact, as a process to enlighten people, as a process for social justice and issues that are important to me. I consider myself an activist. I also, a few years ago, I started the 2014 I started my edutainment production company, the Rainbow Butterfly Cafe, creating artistic treats to nourish the mind, heart, and soul. And the whole mission of my company is to use the performing arts to entertain, enlighten, impact, and empower audiences. Through that, I do my one woman show, Watch Your Head, which is about a actress's journey of hilarious and heartbreaking journey of self discovery following a brain hemorrhage. I also offer workshops, personal and professional development workshops, which uses the expressive and performing out at the base for professional and personal development. You have a fuller schedule than I do. And I thought (laughs) I was burning the candle at both ends. So I'm going to jump right in because, you know, today's topic is all about notable impact. And we're going to be diving into what that is. Before we do that, what I'd like to do is I'd love to hear you answer a question for me and for us that's going to set the stage for how we dig into it. And that question is... What is the strangest and the most notable thing that you've ever done? And how did it impact your life after the fact? You know, that's that's really because, you know, I knew and I've been really thinking because I'm a very strange, I tell a lot in my life. But actually, I'm going to share something I did very recently because of the power that that had on my life and I was really thinking about this and I want to share this because it really for me was such a huge step for me and I say it because even though I've been an activist my whole life what I did recently was so powerful for me and the impact it had on me I was at a um, I was at a diversity um, com- it, the topic was diversity in the arts, and um, I noticed on the panel there was no representation of disability, and that's, I noticed that a lot, and I also, I always speak, uh, you know, I'll speak to someone, the conference, and even that day I said, you know, you don't have anyone representing disability on your panel. They're like, oh, we don't, okay, and so I thought, okay, during the panel at the end I'll say something. Well it came to the end of the panel and there wasn't a Q and A time and I was like, wait and the uh, moderator was like, No, I'm sorry, there's no time for questions. I said, Wait a minute and I'm in this theater with people and they you didn't say anything about disability. You've left disability off the panel. For me, that was huge because she was saying no, sit down, and I didn't sit down. And they let me come up and speak. And I got to say, and I was scared and, and a little bit embarrassed because I'm not normally, I normally say things, but usually within the confines of the, the Q&A. I normally don't break quote unquote protocol, if that made sense. Mm-hmm. But I felt so, in that moment, it was almost like an out of body experience. Because I went, no, I had to say something. And but you, so it was like you were watching, you were watching yourself ask this question. And yeah, I was, I, I was like, you know, because like I said, normally they said we don't have any more time. That would have been the time that I sat down, I should have sat down and said, okay, but I didn't. I said, no, you don't have representation and disability on this panel. And so I got to go up and speak and say what I need to say. And it was just 
like I said, that comes to mind. I don't think that's and it's strange for me because I think for me, I'm very passionate about what I have to say. I just had to say it, and I had to say, look, this is an issue that you're constant that's being left out of the conversation. And I think I have those moments where I call my out there moments. I just feel that need to stay and do something because if I knew if I didn't I think it's one thing to go up to someone individually, it's another thing to take a public stand and take that in a public arena like that, like I did. And it was so hard for me. I heard me felt because I didn't want to. It was very emotional for me. I've been in this game for a year, you know, a while now and talking about how disability needs to be a part of the diversity conversation. And I just needed to say something. Usually I send an email. I needed to say something. I needed to be public and I just felt that come out of me when I said, no, I'm mm-hmm. not going to sit down. Okay. So how did you feel after the fact? So it, yeah. it was something that you were watching yourself. You're like, wow, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. And then it was done. It was over. What happened happened that night, the next day, maybe the next couple of days, there was this moment of reflection and what came up for you? How did it impact you looking back and how did that change you that day? And then the next day, all the way to today. Honestly, really proud of myself. And I, and I think that because I think the response in the moment was very positive, uh-huh. which really helped. Um, cause we were, yeah, you're right. And on that, the following panel, the issues came up. The issues, the, the, the disability, the, the conversation, it was part of the conversation. I felt really good but then there's a part of me that also feels that fear of people said things and then oh yeah that's great what you're saying is really great but it's like wondering despite what i said and despite the action is it going to prompt action to happen and that's the thing i always go back and forth about i'm really proud of what i said and i'm really glad i said what i said but I wonder about the positive impact going forward because this is not something that we as artists with disabilities, this is not new. This is not something we're saying for the first time in 2016. We've been saying this, and I, I say that we, the, the community, I thought that day is me and for, for a community. But it's wondering, okay, our winner. Hopefully, the people I spoke to afterward and can I, we can meet and action can move forward. So that's the other thing I talk about when I say something that's really great and it's really wonderful and you come up and say that's great. But I also want to see action. I want to see things moving forward forward. And I think in many ways they are in the industry. I mean, not just because of that, but I see a lot of positive things that are happening mm-hmm. in the industry with the show Speechless and the show Born This Way, which to my students, to, to my clients, who I, three of our clients who we work with here at Performing at Studio West, where I am one of the acting coaches around that show. So I do see many positive things moving forward in the industry, and I'm very excited about that. But still, I wonder, I go back and forth, and I know it's just a few weeks, and I don't, I don't let them overnight. Wow. But I do wonder if the impact is going to last and if there will be actions taken right. and commitment to action because of what I said. Because <laughs> one of the things that I would take about is images we talk about because the audience diversity and diversity images of um, African American disabilities which we, we don't see a lot of. So there's a lot of diversity within disability that right. I want to see more visible. So and that you, you will know, be 
One of the things that I love about what you're saying, especially when we're talking about disability and we're talking about diversity, we're talking about courage and more and more people are finding the courage to stand up for who they are and what makes them different and not let other people's interpretations and labels that they might give us individually, we're not letting that stand in the way anymore. We might also be silently suffering. So whether we have an overt disability or not, we all have strengths and weaknesses. So this conversation right. has two very important levels. One, if you have a disability, own it and don't let it stop you like Diana didn't let it stop her. Two, right. If we just know what our weaknesses are, why not show them to the world? Because it makes us stronger in who we are, the integrity that we bring, the authenticity of just what is. Part of our embracing our weaknesses is to experience the journey we're supposed to experience while we're here. Being right. the situations being brought to us. One of the things that you said in your answer, Diana, was about opening up. I usually don't open up and I follow the rules. And you know what? I was the good girl in my family and I always followed the rules and I always came up with something that if I wanted to break the rules, whatever I did still fit into some overarching structure that mm -hmm. couldn't come back and, and reflect poorly on me. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and that, you know, that's a, that's what I used to say, oh my God, they're going to think she's, they're going to call security now, you know, there's this woman just speaking and, you know, those thoughts come to me because I grew up as a good girl too. I thought, you know, people, I'm not so much in the day and year, so not because I do try. I don't like divisive conversations. I like positive dialogue. Right. But I don't necessarily let you get into divisive dialogue where cause there are some people who argue points. I more like to have dialogue that we can listen yes. and understand and maybe we agree to disagree. Because sometimes that has to happen. But I don't necessarily feel I need to have a divisive conversation, something they had to say, you know what, we're not going to agree on this, so why continue the conversation, you know, but sometimes yeah. the conversation I don't have because I, I don't see, if we're not going to, sometimes the way to end the conversation is to say, you know what, we're going to have to agree to disagree. Right. Because right. I'm not going to change your mind, you're not going to change my mind, mm -hmm. so there's really no point in continuing this particular part of the conversation because we're at an impasse. And we can be in an impasse. And something that you alluded to there, I took away and made my brain start thinking about empathy. And you're right. Mm -hmm. We can agree to disagree and we may not come to terms, but what we can do when we do open up, because it's when we open up that we create a space to actually learn about ourselves and others. And right. part of empathy is curiosity. Part of mm -hmm. empathy is non-judgment. And when you're right. saying we're going to agree to disagree, that doesn't impart a judgment of right or wrong or this way or that way. There's no or. It's because of the no or, there's still a level of respect. There's an increased awareness because of this. Right little bit of curiosity and not being judgmental about it. Well, I'm very curious about the world. I'm very curious about what makes the thing the rainbow butterfly cafe is a bit the rainbow in it is diversity. And we 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 and so if you truly talk about inclusive diversity, that has to include people that may not think like you do, that may have ideas that you find very difficult for you to be with. And I, and I think this past few weeks <laughs> has been a really good example of that. And I really tried very hard to say, okay, here's the situation, but how can I still come from a place of love and understand and say, you know, again, I, I think the thing is, when you're judging someone and saying, well, they're wrong, blah, 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 I don't agree, blah, 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 they don't agree with you either. You know, it's like, I'm not going to be with them because they made that action. I don't think they're right. Well, the truth is, they don't think you're right either. That's why you have the disagreement. 
So it can't be a one a many situation other than I I mean <laughs> this obvious. I mean, you know, I hope when it comes to, you know, hurting someone or something that's a very different situation. But when it comes to things like political peace, I mean there should be something like that. I think you need to be really, really careful. Um, I agree. Because you never know what people think and how what people aren't just because they're not saying it, you may not know what people think. And I, you know, I I found myself, especially after the election, having to say, I'm not sure how you felt about the outcome. Because that gives us, a, to me, to say, I don't know how you felt about the outcome of the election, gives me a platform to say, open it up. And then from there, have a conversation because I don't know how everyone felt. I know how I felt, mm-hmm. but I don't know how everyone else felt. I don't know how all my friends felt. I, I have a huge I network with many different people through business and the Facebook and do lots of things. So I feel I need to be careful about the words I use because I don't know how it might impact someone who might see what I have to say. Or read it, and I choose to be careful with my language so it doesn't ever come across as I am judging you. Let's talk about that. Let's take judgment deeper. Careful yeah. with words. I agree with you. Words have meanings, and the way we put words together in a sentence makes a difference. And even if we don't know the person we're talking to, we can right. tell when they're being condescending. We can tell mm-hmm. when they close themselves off. We can tell when they're tolerating us. And, you know, it's never good to be the one receiving those feelings of the right. one. And what you said is so important. I want to choose words that facilitate conversation without closing somebody else down. I paraphrased what you said. I really think it's important. So I would love to hear, how do you define being careful with words? I'm just curious because there are these ranges of what words mean. So how do you define empathy? What's empathy in your own words? For me, I I sometimes try and look at, if I know the person, they get circumstances to say, well, what, what are the reasons that they may feel that way? I think it's really, and I think this is when it comes to faith, because I think they can always be a hot button topic. Something I don't understand why people, why someone might feel a certain way, but I don't need to be right. I don't always feel the need to be right. I feel the need to own who I am. Because even people who are vastly different from me and then the thought in terms Still, I think I think we all have basic needs, and, and I have to catch myself when it comes to issues of racism and things like that, because that's another thing that I, you know. And that takes me into the second definition that I want from you, if you are willing to give it, and that yeah. is, what does social justice, how do you define social justice? Oh, I define it as, for me, is working toward making sure everyone has an equal playing level here. And I think a uh, playing level, no matter what it is, is the equal rights here and, and freedom of boys. And for me, it's how working toward a goal of equality. And I think when it comes to freedom of speech and stuff like that, some of I think there, yes, everyone has freedom of speech, and I, I understand that, but I do think some people voice opinions that aren't about everybody having equal opportunity. And so that's when that, that becomes more difficult for me. Not that they don't have the right to have their opinions, but they do. Everyone has the right to their opinion. But for me, so my difference is such a difference is working forward where everyone can have equality in a safe environment and a safe I put culture on that so that if you come into a room 
It's safe. Again, it can be they agree to disagree without feeling judged. Here's a phrase that I have, and I don't know where I came up with this. It was something from my past and over time, and it wasn't one situation. But it was many situations that I was observing. And finally, one day, after pondering this, really heart-searching because I was struggling, and I couldn't figure out why I was struggling. And in this phrase, it came to me, equal without equality. When I think about social justice, and you're talking about an equal playing field in a safe environment, there's this concept of treating everybody equal, yet where's the equality in that? And based off of resources or education or experience of life, it's going to change what our ability for equally is. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can all be equal on paper, but... That lacks our authenticity. It doesn't take into account our own individual downfalls, challenges, places that Mm -hmm. we want to improve, things that we think we're really good at and we want to get better at. I think I totally get what you're saying there. The last word I'd love you to define is diversity. Diversity, to me, again, is is the inclusiveness of... All of them, and that includes the differences, too. I know there was a big campaign after it so wide in that campaign got a lot of news media and a lot of attention. And diversity is very broad because it's not just African and Caucasian. It's you include everyone. And when I talk about diversity and disability, Disability is the only minority that cross section intersects with every other diverse group. We intersect with the LBGTI community, dog, African American, Asian, Native American. Disability intersects with every one of them. Diversity is opinions, it is people who believe in equality and People who don't, oh, people who don't think we should have a diverse community is part of diversity because it, it's embracing, it's not agreeing, but that's part of diversity. If we're truly going to define diversity, it really is that diversity. Mm-hmm. I love being surrounded by like-minded people. Don't get me wrong because right. it makes me feel good. I feel like I'm making an impact. I know I'm helping other people. Yet at the same point in time, if I'm not careful and I forget that all these people think exactly like me, now I become walled off. I become at risk for getting, and I don't like the phrase set in my ways, but for this example, I worry about getting set in my ways. And that's mm-hmm. something that I really feel like we all might need to consciously challenge for a lot of reasons. One, we know that the news outlets and the things that we read are tailored to the way we think and who we are. We know that there are applications out there that are filtering information to show us more of what we like to get our engagement. The problem is we also need the other kind too. And when we, when we find a cause, when we find, some, find right. something we really, really believe in, we don't see both sides. We're really limited in our ability to create some sort of notable impact. And I'm going to just take a second to remind people, everybody, listening, watching, as you are, wherever you are, this is Program 31, Notable Impact, and you're listening to the Voice of Bold Business Radio, where I am your host, Jessica Duell, and we are talking with Diana Elizabeth Jordan today about Notable Impact. I think you're so right, and I know my dad, who just, I learned so much from it, and I remember talking to him once, um, because I was having a a problem with a friend that I really cared about, but who who I still care. I didn't stop caring. This is a friend that I care very much about. I was having some issues with um, the way my friend, some of the things he was saying and things like that, and I was talking to my dad about it. And the thing is, this is the point. Yes, I love being around like-minded people, and I would say most of my inner circle of my friends, we are like-minded, but I will go on the news feed sometimes and read a pain that people I know are very different from mine. So I need to be reminded that not everyone 
is in my little like-minded thought. And this is why I do the thing that I do, because I need to be reminded, you know, this reminds me of how other people think. It reminds me of other people's opinion. It reminds me of why certain things go on in our society, because there is a segment of a population of people who have a totally different point of view. And so when you ask the question, like, how did this happen? Well, this happened because not everyone has our point of view, <laughs> you know? I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I also believe in marriage equality, okay? Mm-hmm. I believe that everyone has the right to marry who they love. I speak out loud about that because there is another point of view about Christianity that can be very narrow-minded. Here's what I hear you saying, and maybe this can move us, because when you were talking and when I was talking, and we're talking about being open or closed, and right. easy to get stuck in being with like-minded people, we're not hearing other points of view, because there are so yeah. many, there's always a spectrum. Two, which is where I think you're going, and what popped into my head, is... If we're not careful and we're only with like-minded people, we can also start to lose a sense of ourself. We, right, right. we now have to live up to this label, this group, these people that we've decided we're hanging with. And now what happens when our weaknesses are not good enough in this group? When right. our points of view actually differ from this group. And now we're at a loss. Do I belong or not? If I speak up, will I still be accepted? Am I going to lose my group? We go into this whole other place where understanding a spectrum of points of view, regardless of and inclusive of everything that everybody believes in, ensures that we can keep our own opinions. We can keep a sure. self. And we recognize that from our experiences, from our ability to see the world, from mm-hmm. what we decide is important to us, is how we show up. When one point of view is more public in the media, mm. I think it reflects on, well, that's how you feel too. It's like when I identify with a certain group and one opinion of that group is more public in the media, gives more of the media attention, that's not necessarily reflective of how the entire group feels. Now you're talking about assumptions. We've got to be careful of what the media is assuming. We've got to be careful of our own assumptions. Okay, now I'm going to put myself in an office setting. Here I am in my business. One of my team, and this is all hypothetical, but it'll it'll become clear here in a second. So I have a team. I'm a manager, and I have 15 people working underneath me, and the whole company has hmm, 150 people in the organization. It's assumptions that their voice doesn't matter. It's an assumption that some decision was just made for the sake of making it. Whereas when we're careful with our words, when we think about what's going on and we recognize we don't have the whole story, how would that change? Another employee might come to me and say, okay, I'm really frustrated because this is the path I was on. I was committed to this and I really feel like the carpet has been pulled out from under my feet. What can you tell me to fill me in? And and there's probably a bazillion other ways to say that same thing, but you can actually tell in the people you interact with, are they using assumptions in their statements? A a common one is assuming that people have facts when they make their decision. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people just say things to say things and right. whether they're right or wrong, they don't care. But there's an, an inherent assumption when you're listening, an assumption of good. And this is a topic of conversation in my house a lot right now. We make assumptions about people that they're acting with our interests in mind or they're mm-hmm. acting from the same point of view and thoughtfulness that I do. And it goes back to no, 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 no. Where did the spectrum go? <laughs> and I think also we need to be able to admit the uncomfortability. And I think we need to say, hey, you know what? I kind of got caught up in something and I meant I am kept, trying to be capable with words and not wanting to offend people. And I realized I said something, something that may have been misconstrued. And all I can do is say, if some of my words recently were offensive to any listeners. That was not my intention. 
And I apologize. Oh. Uh, and I say that because I think sometimes I know I do good. Uh, the girls like me <laughs> are, are afraid to be wrong and make mistakes because the world will come apart if I make a mistake. <laughs> and so, so a I've been really girl. working with that and saying, you know what? It wasn't my intention, but if I did, I sincerely apologize. Be- I tried to be a good girl, but I'm not a perfect girl. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so you heard it here first. Diana uh, is a good girl. She also is demonstrating being a nice girl. <laughs> in, I'm, I'm, in all of her superpowers, she's still human, just like us. Yeah, my sister introduced to the word flossom is like awesome with flaws. So I'm a flossomly happy girl. <laughs> I'm flossom. I'm flossom. <laughs> You were thinking about the impact that you had and how people were, they, they were like, wow, way to go. Way to go, Diana, for right. saying that. Way to go for stepping up, congratulating you on your courage, on your willingness to get uncomfortable and say something that was not represented and get it into the conversation. Mm-hmm. And you were wondering, well, are they going to do anything about it? Is it just going right. to be, oh, the question I think maybe – what we can explore a little bit would be how do we get to some steps knowing that you had the courage to stand up, but also wondering after the fact, well, how much impact am I going to have with this? What are people going to do with it? Is there something that you want that you did say, or you wanted to say to the people that said, thank you. I liked your point of view. That took a lot of courage. Is there something that you said to them or you think you could have said to them looking back that would prompt some action? Be diligent in how I follow up. So I don't want to hear, you know, if I don't want to hear back in a couple of weeks and I know we're getting right before the holidays. And you know, so I understand that to say, hey, you know, just following up, I would love to, I'm trying to set a couple of meetings up right now with a couple of people that um, I spoke to and I don't want to say organizations or anything because I I don't Mm -hmm. feel that. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm going to do right now. And also, again, this is not something I'm doing alone. I mean, I'm very active with the performance of disabilities in the SAG. I'm uh, I'm Queen Actress of Guild. And there is a movement out there. There is a movement. I just, on that particular day, I was able to speak for the movement, and I made sure that that was part of the conversation with that event. There, there's a whole. Um, my friends, we're we're strong activists. We're we're continuing to get the message out there in the entertainment industry that we need to have diversity include disability and disability is diverse. And again, like I said, there are, I see wonderful changes with the show Speechless. Um, with Michael Fowler, I think is the name of the young actor and born this way an opportunity for we are seeing authentic portrayals of disability in the media. So I'm very hopeful about the changes I see and I hope as you know, I feel I have to see more. But I feel confident I see changes and that makes me feel good. I know a lot of the activism that's going out there. That makes me feel confident. But again, it's it's actions, not words. I do see people taking action and that's very And there's an element of thinking. Go back to that Marianne Williamson quote that I shared at the beginning. If we know we want to get action, the first thing we really have to do is think. After thinking, the first question is, what action can I take myself? Momentum has to start somewhere. And if we're the one that wants action, we've got to be the momentum. So how how are we going to be it? Think about how can we be the momentum and then being able to take action ourselves in the action that we take ourselves. I heard you say things like I'm part of organizations and I've got this follow up plan, which by the way, took thinking everybody. Here's the plan. Here's what I want to do. And when that follow-up occurs, what exactly does the follow-up entail? Is it adding new information? Is it sharing the same information? Mm -hmm. Regardless, 
It's keeping the communication open, which is the other piece of that part of that follow up, that diligence that you talked about, Diana was following up on the communication and staying connected and sharing the information that needs to be shared. Because sometimes when we're taking our action and building the momentum, all we're doing is planting seeds. Not Mm -hmm. everybody's going to be ready to move right away. However, that momentum, that energy, that intention can plant a seed and with continued contact, dialogue, communication, even if it's one way some of the time, opens that door for the right time and the right place to occur so that the conversation can become a two-way conversation. The conversation can go further and there can be cooperative action. And now we have even more momentum, which allows us to reach more people that we want to take more action. And it doesn't matter if it's around social justice. It doesn't matter if it's around politics. It doesn't matter if it's around religion. It doesn't matter if it's around Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts or 4-H. It matters that it's people to people. And that's the connection that we have to get action. And it starts right here at home with each and every single one of us. And I think it's also also with taking action is finding your community that is a part like I said with the diversity and this is the inclusion I'm not this is not something Diana started or Diana did by herself I'm a part of a community and I had an opportunity at that moment to speak on behalf of the community because my community was not represented. And so I took action and said, I just say, hey, I'm Diana. I'm not working. I'm not working after that. That was, that was the <laughs> taking action on behalf of me. I took action because I was in a position at that moment to say something for my community. So I took action on behalf of my community to say we need to see more representation in the entertainment industry. I had that opportunity in that moment to speak on behalf of my community and I did. And I love that. And this goes back to thinking. We can only help others when we help ourselves. We do have to start with us first. Sometimes you're right, Diana, you can totally totally speak on behalf of a community, which goes back to thinking. I've got to think about what is my intention? What is the outcome I'm working toward? And what are the steps I'm going to take? I've got to speak for me because I'm part of this community first and I know what I need. And I think that that's a very good distinction to make and recognize that we are recognize our individuality within a community, Mm -hmm. what we need personally and what we can actually offer and can, how our action and our intention can help make sure right. we're solid as well as the communities that we are a part of. I bring that diversity. So I, yes. I do both. I mean, because yes. I'm networking as individual, we, we, you know, but I, it's also about, hey, if someone is on cast, this is what I bring to a show. Yeah. I bring that diversity. I I can do that. So it, it's always both because I think even again, individual is still I'm bringing that image, that visible image to your show. I am a representative. I'm a visible representative as an artist of that community. This is the image I bring, you know, as a <laughs> woman who's not 29. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, my friend Annie is, is another fabulous actress. She brings another image. And that's the, what that's so great about diversity is this seeing diverse images. I can't be in every show, nor do I want to be in every show, but we can have diverse images in our films and our TV and our stages. Art represents the culture, and we should have diverse images seen in our art. We're representing the culture. I love how you just articulated that. And what I would like to just ask our audience to reflect on is, 
what is the element of diversity that you and your communities bring to our culture? And how do they help humanity? I'm going to go back to uh, Because when we're making notable impact, regardless of agreement or disagreement, regardless of position, regardless of life experience, we all want what we think is best. Now, because of the spectrum, there is no one best. And that's the part that I, I want to come back to with empathy. So being curious about the communities and the priorities and what's really important to the individuals that make up each of these communities and just being curious about why it might be important to them. What is their life experience that helps, that helps define that? And recognizing that even within our own teams, in our own organizations, that we've got a lot of different life experience. We've got a lot of different things happening in individuals' lives. We have a, a level of ability with everybody. We have impact. It depends on if our impact is directed and if our actions and our intentions line up so that we're at least planting the seeds, so that we're keeping a conversation open, so that we're mm -hmm. learning from our life experiences. And I'm right. going to ask our audience, we want you to share with us your tips for how to get action. What is a situation that you have had great success with? Or what are you currently working on and how are you making that progress? You can see your intention in action because of how your situation is changing and the situation of those around you is changing and the situation of your communities are changing. I'm gonna write up some show notes and when this program airs, all of the program notes will be right along with it. So you can go to the Voice of Bold Business Radio and search Program 31, Notable Impact, or just go to voiceofboldbusiness.com slash P31. Be a leader, lead in your own life. It's really the way we think and the way that we act that makes an impact. So let's make sure it's an impact we want, a notable impact. Subscribe at thevoiceofboldbusiness.com and get more information, program notes, and past episodes. Bold leaders approach each situation and focus on action to achieve a higher level of leadership. Jessica Duell, your business advocate, is the host of the Voice of Bold Business Radio. Thank you for joining us.